Okay. Okay. Well, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Monday, May 15th town board meeting. Uh, please join me while we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Okay, well, it's really nice to see so many people in the audience tonight. Um, and we have new microphones, which it's, the sound seems very clear. So you guys can hear well. Okay, great, good. Okay, so uh, the first item on the agenda is to accept our minutes of the May 1st meeting. Uh, may I have a motion to do so? Make a motion. And a second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, the next item is to uh, is a public hearing on the MS4 uh, annual report. So, uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the public hearing notice? Please take notice that the Town Board of the Town of Hollywood <coughs> will hold a public hearing on the 2016-2017 MS4 permit annual report for the Town of Hyde Park, Dutchess County, New York, on Monday, May 15, 2017, at 7.05 p.m. At the, the Hyde Park Town Hall, 4383 Albany Post Road, Hyde Park, New York. A copy of the proposed 2016-2017 MS4 annual report is available for review on the Town of Hyde Park website and in the office of the town clerk during regular business hours. All persons interested in being heard on this report shall be given the opportunity to do so at said public hearing on May 15th. By order of the town board of the town of Hyde Park, dated May 2nd, 2017, Hyde Park, New York, Donna McGrogan, town clerk. Okay, uh, are there any members of the audience that would like to come up to the podium and speak about the annual MS4 report? Didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Such so, an interesting topic. Uh, so um, may I have a motion to uh, close the public hearing? Make a motion. And a second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, so uh, the next item on our agenda is a workshop on the Bellfield Project uh, sewer mitigation update. And I'd like to welcome uh, the representatives of Bellfield here tonight and ask you to come on up to the table that we have here and give us uh, a presentation on the discussions that we've been having over the last few months. And I would just ask you to introduce yourself and um, thank you for coming. Well, um, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Gaudio uh, with Bellafield, and uh, with me is uh, Land Use Council Jennifer Van Tile, Tom Mulray, and Michael Oates. And I want to thank uh, the town board for the invitation tonight to uh, pre present the proposal for the alternative uh, sewer mitigation. So the, um, in taking a step back um, the, from the 2007 uh, finding statement when the project uh, received its conceptual approval, a key uh, mitigant in that agreement was for uh, mitigation. Um, and at the time, there was the, the notion of building a central sewer system for the town, of, of which um, at the time the St. Andrews project, which is now Bellafield, um, would. Um, Okay, would be responsible for um, um, building 150,000 gallons a day of capacity to serve the Route 9 corridor of, the, of what was uh, still is considered the historic district of the town, in addition to um, a sewer main that um, the various properties would contribute. As um, 10 years has now gone by, um, the um, with, I would say, a change in both the, the economic times as well as um, a variety of alternatives. Um, in recent months, we've had discussions um, under the supervisor's leadership of alternatives, which um, include smaller, um, a series of smaller uh, package units that would provide sewer to critical neighborhoods within the, within the town uh, historic district. So. Um, Tonight, that's what we're here to propose is um, 
a alternative mitigation that would involve um, um, a series of payments, um, the bulk of it which would be made at the front end, and then um, which would allow the town to then go ahead and plan um, their sewer requirements, um, you know, with with certainty. Um, I think that's a really important difference. The um, from the 2000 time frame, 2007 time frame, there was a lot of hard work, but it turned out to be an overly ambitious approach to um, to meet this mitigation requirement. So. We're here tonight to propose something that um, that um, that we feel can meet the needs and, and something that we can uh, just as importantly actually deliver. So, Jennifer. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you for that, and I just want everybody to know that Joe is a uh, grew up in Hyde Park. If, if people are familiar with him, and so I'm sure you're happy to be back here. <laughs> I have, you know, I do have um, one comment though. Um, <laughs> I noticed there was some um, remodeling done, and some of the old baseball plaques were removed. Oh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, my name was prominent. I like, know. Well, we'll deal with that off. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. I think uh, Joe hit it on the head when he said that we have been uh, exploring the alternatives of proposing a mitigation that is more uh, realistic than what was proposed, which included over five miles of sewer main uh, down Route 9. And I think that uh, we all know what happened to the economy after 2007, less than a year after these findings were adopted. But I think we also live in a world that's much smarter now in the sense of looking at uh, alternatives. And we think that our uh, what we are going to discuss with you now and, and what we have been discussing provides much better benefits for the town in the near term. Uh, uh, there have been hopes for, for the grandiose scheme, but it just hasn't proven to be realistic. Uh, this is something that uh, very heavily front loads uh, the payments to provide uh, a town with options that could indeed have much more flexibility than what was proposed before. So. Um, <coughs> The proposal that is now on the table, and um, I will give credit to the town and to uh, Warren for twisting arms in a very, <laughs> very powerful way, uh, but we are proposing that there would be two payments that would go into a special fund of the town for purposes of capital costs and debt service for one or more uh, sewer systems to serve the town center historic district. And I think what's important about this is we're not just trying to have one grandiose scheme that's sort of the same uh, menu for everyone, but understanding that there may be different areas that could uh, prosper with different systems. So the first payment would be $1 million to this town fund. And uh, it would be, as I said, payable for uh, debt service, capital costs, study, <coughs> all types of capital expenditures uh, related to developing and implementing these um, uh, one or more sewer districts. Uh, and that this payment would be due to the town upon the signing of the site plan uh, and subdivision for the very first phase of the project. In other words, this is the phase 1A uh, that's being that's uh, presently before your planning board, the, the hotel. Uh, and, uh, but in any event, it's not totally dependent upon the approval of the hotel in any way and does not uh, compel approval of the hotel, but would be due in any event no later than three years after uh, the proposal was accepted by the town. So, so you would have that guaranteed. And then there would be a further payment of an additional $250,000 at the time that the next subphase. So it's, it's not a, a waiting a long time. It's, it's for the next subphase. And in any event, no longer than four years from the date it's accepted. So there's only an additional maximum uh, year if, if the three-year uh, deadline applies for that second payment. And uh, we also have agreed and proposed that there be additional enforceability of this alternative mitigation uh, in that 
it would not only be required by the seeker findings, uh, uh, amended seeker findings or the board's uh, seeker determination, but we also agree that if the alternative mitigation is accepted, that it would also be enforced by an environmental mitigation agreement that would specifically bind the developer to these mm -hmm. payments and also make clear that if there's a tardiness or default on any of these payments um, that th that the board, uh, the, the lead agency would have full power to revisit the entire question. So I think that's, uh, it's, it's belt and suspenders uh, in terms of uh, being very aggressive in ensuring that the matter would be um, enforceable. So, uh, so this is what our proposal is. We're, we, we think that it's something that um, is win-win uh, for the town and for the developer. We think it encourages uh, the development of Belfield in an appropriate way in, in the start, but also uh, ensures that at the very beginning of the project, the very first subphase, the town gets a material an important contribution uh, solely for the benefit of the Town Center Historic District and what was identified in the findings of making sure that these properties could be developed to their full potential and compete effectively with other properties uh, in the area that did have sewer. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Jennifer. I um, it really has been an interesting and very rewarding process to work with you uh, for myself and, and uh, Warren and Emily. And I really appreciate how, um, how much you emphasize the realistic component to this proposal. Um, as many people in Hyde Park know, we, uh, the lack of a commercial sewer district has been vexing us since about 1962 or so. And, and so, uh, you know, it was a beautiful um, idealized concept that, that came forth uh, back with the St. Andrews Village. And, you know, as Joe alluded to, the, the bottom fell out of the economy and really values have changed and society's changed. and to be able to come up with a situation where it's a ready contribution of a million dollars uh, initially and then another 250. Um, it's coming at the right time for the town of Hyde Park. It actually, we are putting together so many other pieces of this puzzle and, and so uh, to have a cash contribution will really make uh, something that could remain theoretical for another 50 years. Uh, happen and so um, I feel really very positive about uh, th this development and appreciate how willing you willingly you have approached it and especially in terms of the security that you're willing to provide um, you know that as you alluded to the uh, reality of the site plan approval process and uh, these other aspects that will uh, make that make us feel comfortable that this contribution will actually occur. So um, I know that uh, Warren and you have worked very carefully on the agreement portion, and I'm not sure if you want to go through that now, or how, how would you like to handle that? Well, I, ju I just want to say a couple things, and I think I Emily, know Emily wants, does too, wants sure. to weigh in. Um, I don't know if you got the wrong impression in terms of uh, the negotiations that have been going on and preceding it um, where we've come to today. but. It's really been the work of our town supervisor uh, who has done the hard negotiation and getting us, which we think is a win-win situation for the town and for the developer. So I want to make sure that that's clearly recognized. Um, the, um, uh, uh, I don't know if you wanted to mention something about the proposed phase 1A or do you want to leave that for the public hearing um, in terms of what you're proposing at this point? The hotel? Yeah, I mean, just um, just just briefly. The um, well, first off, we um, concur with uh, the supervisor's leadership. Um, it was really uh, very well done. I mean, Mike uh, Oates was a co-partner uh, from the developer side, and it was just a it was just a great and very positive negotiation. So, um, 
you know, we, we thank you for, for your leadership well, on that. Appreciate your, your, your support, and yeah. uh, it really was. It was a very positive interaction on all our parts. And I think that's because we have the ultimate same goal, right. uh, and that's been an additional benefit of our discussions, is that you um, recognize how much the imp how important the success of the existing town center is to your future success and and i have to say it's a little bit refreshing uh, to right. to have that um, attitude and and i know that we will have a beneficial uh, effect on the, a synergistic effect and and uh, appreciate that so yeah so tell us okay. about the phase one so the um the first phase is a um is um, 133 unit um, uh, a room hotel um, that would be located in the southwest corner of the property um, and that would be um, uh, the um, the corner of Dorsey Lane and Route 9 um, so it will be um, <clears throat> originally um, it was envisioned that the property would have a single uh, you know, approximately 300 room hotel. The thinking is to split it up into two smaller hotels and um, and, get, and get started with that. And uh, so we've been, um, we have not actually submitted the site plan application yet, but uh, there's a lot of hard work that's going on with um, with the engineers. Um, you know, Pete Zotero is working very closely with the Chazen organization, um, dealing with all the, um, you know, the non-town agencies, the DOT, DEC, uh, the county. So a lot of that work is already um, underway. And of course, uh, you know, Chairman Dupree is, has his fingerprints um, all over it, which is very positive to get that sort of input. But uh, we would expect a, a, an actual <coughs> submission of the site plan application, you know, probably early to mid-June to mid is, um, is the goal that, that we're looking to um, to achieve, and again, it would be the first of what we envision as two two hotels, and then um, um, and then both Tom and Mike uh, have been working very diligently on additional um, phases and things to come. Um, I think just from a market positioning standpoint, as this project is about to become real, the the credibility in terms of recruiting some of the other companies that we're talking to is going to increase exponentially, and so we're. We're confident that uh, whether it's restaurants, you know, a market, other type culinary-based um, companies are going to be uh, are going to be soon to follow. So, I mean, do you guys have anything to supplement? No. Well, why don't you guys introduce yourselves too? Sure. So, um, uh, Mike Oates. Yeah. Um, and Tom. Yep. Introduce yourself. Tom Mulroy. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, just playing on what Joe said, I think uh, as we move forward with this process, we're, we're seeing great interest in, in the site. Uh, we're meeting with a, with a host of businesses that have interest, um, you know, and we'll be working uh, through those negotiations, um, you know, over the coming months. And we, uh, we expect to see some uh, great activity happen uh, in addition to the hotel. Uh, and we'd love to come back and make some more announcements uh, talking about bringing jobs and investment, you know, to the community, and we Absolutely. think that's critical. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yes. I mean, from our side on a global basis, I think tourism is a key to this whole project, and I think the first step is this first phase, which is really going to ignite the site based on tourism. So mm -hmm. I think it is going to be a win-win from both sides. Well, I know that uh, Mary Kay Verba has, uh, head of Dutchess County Tourism, has uh, identified the absence of hotel rooms as a real limitation for the growth of our tourism industry. So, I mean, what a perfect location uh, directly across from the CIA within five minutes of the National um, Historic Sites and just all the trails. So it's, uh, it's going to be a positive time for, for Hyde Park and for Dutchess County. I just wanted to um, turn this over to uh, Emily uh, because I think an important component uh, of this uh, of, of this uh, change in the project um, it will be uh, the utilization of these funds in conjunction with an ICERTA grant that we uh, uh, received. So it comes at a very important time for the town, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Emily, who's. Uh, to give us a little background on the NYSERDA grant and um, what we expect and hope from that. 
Sure, happy to. Um, I, I just wanted to start off by saying, you know, this has been a really exciting uh, process, and I think there's a lot to like about this proposal, and I hope the public agrees when they come out um, to the public hearing in a month, and if they find anything that we missed and want to let us know, that'd be a time to do it, but um, I think it's a, a great opportunity. Um, and I think it was, it was great that Joe pointed out at the beginning that there was, this was never going to, the original um, mitigation plan was never for just a free sewer for the town. It was, it was a contribution that the project would make towards the sewer that would also rely on um, the club at Hyde Park being a partner in it and all the property owners um, being partner in it. So it was, it was a contribution towards a larger sewer and so the, the uh, monetary contribution is also a contribution towards a sewer for the, the central part of town. So. Um, but just to, as Warren said, um, we, we get very excited about <laughs> our planning work that's underway, so um, I'll just give a little update on that. Um, so the, over the past five years, we've been working with Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority to think about how we could bring a small sewer system to the existing um, business part of town. Um, and we've looked at, at different configurations for that and um, realized that what we really needed was to get, have a feasibility study that we could take to funders. So we were able to get a grant from um, NYSERDA, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, um, under their Cleaner Greener Communities program, which is um, based on reducing um, climate change by um, having people drive less. So we were able to get a grant for um, planning for the town center area that encompasses um, a market analysis, um, a conceptual redesign, a sewer feasibility study, um, design of transportation improvements, and also a new zoning. <laughs> so we have hired a contractor team for that, um, uh, led by Delaware Engineering, who have really great um, sewer expertise and they're getting started they're going through all the existing materials and they're planning some public outreach sessions for June um, we'll have more information about that and um, so they're going to be really looking at the uh, area of Route 9 around where the old Grand Union was and some extent north and south kind of depending on what they determine to be um, the, the the optimal area to serve with a sewer so that you get the price in the right range um, as everybody knows, a big sewer costs a lot more because the more pipe you have, the more cost you have, and so you want to try to keep it as compact as you can so you have um, less pipe for the number of customers served. Um, so we are proceeding with that feasibility study. Um, in the meantime, um, Aileen was able to work with the Partnership for Manageable Growth Program at Dutchess County and applied and received uh, $500,000 um, for that's sort of in a lockbox for us for when we do have a sewer plan ready to go and we're applying this year for um, economic development funds through the New York State um, consolidated funding application uh, there's a lot of different sewer funding that New York State offers and people keep saying why don't you go get some of it well the problem is that it's all <coughs> available to communities that have a failing system either a failing sewer system or septic systems that are causing pollution. And we don't really have those problems. Um, what we need is a new sewer system to serve an area that needs redevelopment. And the grant, the environmental grant programs that New York has don't really cover that. So we're going through a different um, avenue through the economic development funding source. Um, and we're gonna be putting together an application. And we've been working with the grant writers um, who are really excited about all the pieces that we have in place that, make, that are gonna make for a strong application, including the, um, the sidewalk money that we've gotten. We just got another million dollar sidewalk grant and having all of those infrastructure pieces can all contribute towards a, an application, for strengthening an application for sewer. So, um, with that said, I, I feel that where we are right now, it's a moment in time that we're, we're closer than Hyde Park has ever been to getting a sewer system for the town center. And so I think the idea of having um, some dedicated funding come in that we can use to leverage additional state funding. If you wanna get state funding, you have to show that you have some, some match. So for, for, for that to be available as a monetary contribution could work really well for the town. 
Great. Thank you, Emily. That's a, a wonderful rundown of uh, hours and hours of effort, and <laughs> actually days, weeks of effort. To, and to be able to describe it that succinctly is really good. But also one of the um, items that you addressed, and I you know, can't hit this home enough, is that uh, you know, Hyde Park, because it's such a lengthy area, it's this five miles that we were formerly uh, going to attempt to sewer, it makes it a much more expensive project. And we've done some back of the napkin uh, estimates for what a decentralized pro uh, project might cost, and we're looking at about 10 million uh, as, you know, as a rough estimate. So the concept of sewering the entire uh, town center historic district seems like a very unrealistic and uh, cost prohibitive type measure. And just to add a little bit more history to it, um, when during that period when the St. Andrews was applying, uh, Rich Perkins was on the board at that time, and he spent a lot of time exploring these alternative methods. And you know, when we talk to Hyde Parkers, what they really want to see is our existing buildings and our existing center redeveloped. And that's why all these other pieces, uh, the pedestrian improvements, these uh, are all geared towards creating a downtown and uh, the creating and having this sewer and having a cash contribution which is available now will really make the difference for High Park and you know like Emily said I, I think that we're closer than we've ever been so uh, it's, and it's coming at a good time I mean the Hudson Valley is obviously on the radar of many uh, metropolitan people and international national people wanting to come visit so it's, it's a good time good time for Hyde Park I'm really excited I mean our future is now and we really just have so many great things going with all these grants and, and I can't wait to see you know the transformation of Route 9 and I'm really excited that we have a developer that is really from our hometown you know and really cares not just about that piece of property but our whole town and our <coughs> supervisor and you know I'm just really excited for the future of that that project um, I think uh, you know I'm a born here in Hyde Park myself so I'm excited to see that portion of the town um, really just help this portion of the town and uh, I just really thank you for all your work and dedication through this process and, and working with our supervisor I know you guys have you know really put your knuckles down and, and drag them through the mud but uh, I think we really have a, a, a great concept here and you know our futures now and, and I just really see it coming together so congratulations on, on the two of you. So just to be clear, and uh, Dave, yeah, yeah, this is your ward. It is my ward. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been knocking on doors already, I hear. Uh, no, well, but every time I knock on doors, you know, in the last uh, two terms, first question is, what are you going to do about those empty buildings, you know, the old Malloy's and the Grand Union? You know, and we said, we're trying. You know, we're trying to improve the town. We're trying to improve the infrastructure. And, and they're saying, well, you're building sidewalks. Yeah, and as Kenny came up with sidewalks to the future, and the future's coming pretty quick now. So I'm excited because I'm a high park, lifelong high parker also. I had a good talk for him about uh, all the times. Matter of fact, I worked right on this corner where this uh, town hall was until it burned down in the 60s. Uh, Molloy Pharmacy, you know, those days we had all different stores. Those stores are gone now, you know, the independent drugstore, the butcher market, whatever. They're gone because of... Well, as you know, the internet mostly, but uh, even the big stores are hurt. So you have to get specialty stores and niches, and uh, tourism, as Aileen said, is, is huge now again in Dutchess County, and High Park is the epicenter of tourism in Dutchess County. There's no doubt about it. There's very few places to stay, though. They have to stay south or north or across the river even. So I'm really excited, um, and I hope it goes through. I've seen a lot of plans over the years that haven't, you guys seem to have it together, and I hope you do. Uh, but um, I want to say, these two gals here, Aileen and Emily, I call them the dynamic duo. <laughs> they are amazing what they get done. Absolutely well, amazing. Emily makes me work harder. Well, I've got to try to keep up with this, <laughs> this young one. <laughs> well, I'm an old man, so I have to do I let them. I just <laughs> applaud all the time. And I think it's just a fantastic. Hey, we, we like that, though. Yeah, well, you get it. <laughs> I always give that. <laughs> so that's... Uh, Thanks. Good. Um, good yeah. to be here. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that that you know we I talked a lot about the town center and um, that's been our passion to see how we can get the town center to thrive, but um, you know not to prejudge what you end up applying for or anything, but I think the idea of um, a hotel or other tourism supporting business um, at that site could be a really great. Um, uh, they it could 
what's the word, synergy, that it would support the town center and vice versa, that if, you know, having the, the, that tourism infrastructure at that part of town. So I think it's, it's very exciting. So to, to just clarify with everyone, and I know Joe would probably have some comments too, just that, you know, so in the prior uh, agreement that was um, arrived at back in 2007, the uh, town board was the lead agency for that, uh, that agreement. And, you know, as part of the, the um, documents that were produced that the town board was charged with the decision on the mitigation. Um, and at that point, they planned on uh, continuing with the management of the, uh, the application. But, you know, our, our feeling is that we um, are, our responsibility is the mitigation, but we look forward to uh, turning this application or this process over to the planning board who has tremendous expertise much more than we do in the and we have Ann, Ann and Tori are here and um, and Diane. Pete and Diane so uh, <laughs> thank you for coming you know and that you know we know that you have the expertise in the secret process and and so many other aspects so we look forward to concluding our portion which is under review and we'll be looking for the public's input on that on June 5th uh, and then um, uh, passing the actual application off to the planning board in the very near future after that so Joe, did you have some comments? Yeah. I know that, yes. Well, I just want to uh, say that um, I grew up in Hyde Park, too. I lived here my whole <laughs> life. And you know, a lot of us have. I, I guess, know. I keep looking down the line. But um, you saw, so I'm very excited about this and encouraged also. And um, seeing a lot of the stores coming and going through the years, um, I know that this will encourage the, this, the storefronts getting filled and, and um, the spirit of Hyde Park uh, growing. So okay. oh, thank you. Good. And I'm sorry, you said when was the submission going to be? Uh, we would um, look to submit, um, yeah, about the say, resolution. shortly after um, the, uh, say, okay. the resolution for, for the okay. alternative mitigation. So, you know, okay. June, first, second week of June. Great. So, yeah, I think the next step, as Aileen alluded to, is that June 5th we'll have a public hearing, so that we're, we'll be setting that tonight so that if anyone in the public wants to um, give us their input on, you know, whether they support this concept or, or have questions or concerns. Um, and then after that, maybe Warren, do you want to explain? What yeah, Warren, do you have some legal uh, Yeah, I mean, basically, in, in order to move forward with this and the alternative mitigation, it was contemplated. Um, in the original seeker findings for this project that it may not happen and uh, there was uh, an allowance for that and a process that was uh, stated in the uh, original seeker finding statement um, which indicated that if it doesn't happen the uh, uh, town board as the lead agency is vested with the power uh, to revisit the issue of mitigation um, and to um, uh, adopt um, a, a an alternative uh, mitigation for the project. Uh, so we're following that that process. It's the uh, town board is still the lead agency. So the town board, after the public hearing on the fifth, um, will um, make a decision as to the proposed mitigation uh, that's been proposed. Alternative mitigation that's been proposed by the uh, developer. Um, in conjunction with that, we are going to have a um, an agreement with the developer to make sure that. The alternative mitigation is enforceable, um, and um, so uh, while we think uh, it totally makes sense to proceed in this matter, uh, we don't want to make any decisions um, until we have an opportunity to hear if the public has a, a, a different view on this. So June 5th is the time for that. We anticipate that after that we would then move forward, hopefully, with the um, a decision on the uh, alternative mitigation, uh, enter into the agreement, and move forward with the uh, with the project. So, all we need uh, tonight is to accept at the dais the uh, proposed resolution which I have prepared, which gives a lot of background on how we came to this point over the years, um, and um, it will be in the record, and the public is free to uh, see that. We are going to um, do a very simple public hearing notice, which will set the date for the public hearing and allow people to come in and um, comment, and we'll be sending notification to all the involved agencies 
in the original seeker process. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion to add the resolution scheduling the public hearing on consideration of potential alternate sewer mitigation for the St. Andrews Belfield project to the agenda and the resolution that goes with it? Make a motion. And a second. <laughs> and all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And did you already get a copy, <clears throat> I think, done? So just to clarify, the public hearing then is about the proposed alternative mitigation, right. which is the one and a quarter million dollar um, cash contribution for the town to set aside and use for capital improvements for a sewer system for the the um, town center and then the actual there will be a process through the planning board for people to comment on the project itself right so Correct. the public yeah. hearing is not right. about the project it's right. really just about making that exchange for the mitigation that goes with the concept plan and then we can turn the whole thing over to the planning board and you can have fun with it <laughs> <laughs> and that's really why we don't have details on the proposed plan here because that's not a town board function so uh, that will be occurring after your submittal. Okay. I think that's it. So, I think we've okay. covered everything. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank appreciate you. your thank time you. and thank, thank you so for much. coming thank in you. and, and look you. forward to the submission. And uh, you. you may want to be here on for the public hearing also. So on June fifth. Yeah. Good. All right. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Good night now. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work, guys. Thank you. And then uh, we actually do have another uh, resolution to be added at the dais, and that's a uh, resolution authorizing the town supervisor to submit applications for the 2017 Dutchess County Municipal Innovation Grant Program. I make a motion. And a second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Cleared out the... Yeah. And the resolution yeah. that for June 5th, that's going to be 515-17? It's It'll be 13. 13. 13. 13. It was on the agenda, but, but we it was, actually they didn't have, have the resolution. Oh, gotcha. yep. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, is there any uh, public comment on the resolutions? Oh. <laughs> it's hard to be in two places at once, isn't it, Herb? I want to be sure to get my good side. <laughs> uh, I'm commenting on resolution 12, which is to uh, abolish the media committee. And. Uh, <coughs> the town clerk, I'm Herbert Sweet at Six Covey Road. Sorry about that. Uh, there are three reasons why I don't think this should happen exactly at this point. Uh, number one, the contract between the town and Video Ventures uh, calls for the Video Ventures to work with the media committee, and I believe that's in regards to the transition. So if we dissolve the media committee at this point, we won't, won't be able to do that. Second item is uh, we are uh, hopeful that our vendor will get things off without a glitch. But in my experience, and other and professionals as well, you need a plan B and a plan C. That's plan B. If something goes wrong, I got it covered. I've got a plan C and a plan D, and I can tell you about that, but we'll pass that on for the moment. The third thing is that uh, during the initial stages, at least for a while, uh, we need to monitor what the contractor is doing. Uh, is he meeting the town's needs? Uh, are there any problems? And if we don't have a media committee to do that, then it's going to be up to you folks to do it. So, and not to be too picky, but finally, when the time does come, uh, I would suggest that the wording be slightly changed. Instead of abolishing the media committee, I would say dissolve. And the reason I'm saying that is because of the negative connotations. One thinks of abolishing slavery. It hasn't been that bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, dissolve is what we do with government bodies when we don't need them anymore. So there's my speech for the night, folks. Thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks sir. Good, thanks, sir. good thank points. Thank you, and Barbara, thank you for all your we didn't use banish. Communicate. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, good points, Herb. Okay, so um, you know, with with uh, those comments, I think that we should um, uh, defer that um, number twelve until um, perhaps uh, you know our next meeting where we could set a dissolution date, uh, you know, a, a few months out or something like that. So. Um, 
And do I have a motion to uh, remove that from the agenda for tonight? So moved. And a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyone else from the public? Would you like to comment on any of the <laughs> resolutions? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Emily, would you like to go ahead with uh, the first one? Resolution 515-1 of 2017, resolution to amend the 2016 transactions to the town's reserve funds. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 515-2 of 2017, resolution to amend the 2017 recreation fee schedule for the town of Hyde Park. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah, this, I just want to comment on that, uh, that I did receive an email from a very nice person um, whose children have gone through the um, intern program and that she asked if we could waive the fee. Uh, and, you know, I, I would love to be able to do that, but uh, with the la uh, where we did not receive the revenue expected through the grant program, this was the recommendation of the uh, camp director to balance her budget and we really are compelled to balance the budget so uh, you know I'm going to continue to think of other possible solutions but um, you know at this point in time I think that we do need to follow the recommendation of the um, highway uh, the rec commissioner the rec commissioners and the rec director and the comptroller to make sure that the ba budget is balanced but we are apologetic about that and hopefully uh, within the next that next year we'll be more successful in our yeah. grant application okay resolution 515-3 of 2017 resolution amending the agreement for the expenditure of highway monies second could I just uh, sure please that do for a mm -hmm. so um, the the existing so every year we have a 284 agreement that that lists the um, roads that the highway superintendent has selected for um, the state funds to be used to repave each summer. And so the roads that we're currently on that list are Marshall Road, Belvedere Road, Glade Road, Kim Lane, and Kelly Circle that the highway superintendent had selected for this summer. Um, we were fortunate to receive two extra allocations of state aid this year. Um, and so we'll be adding some funds for the South Drive Bridge, which the, the wall of that South Drive Bridge badly needs to be um, redone. And so um, we'll be using some of the state funds for that, and then some to extend the paving on Cardinal Road. Right. Um, those were the, the choices mm -hmm. of the highway superintendent. So that's um, what we'll be doing with this resolution. And then there are additional resolutions on tonight um, to go out to bid for the paving and to go out to bid for the South Drive Bridge. Great. Great. Thanks, Emily. And actually, before everyone leaves, I need you to sign this. So I'm just going to pass it down that way and then back this way. Okay. Did we vote on that? I don't think we did. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 And also, just to add to that, that the Comptroller is currently closing out the 2016 books, but he said that if, if the funding allows, we may be able to put some town money towards paving as well. Which so would be great. it would be nice to, if oh, we... Wow. If we have uh, scrimped and saved up some extra funds, it would be good to be able to put some of that back into the roads. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Start with that. Resolution 515-4 of 2017, resolution accepting the proposal mm -hmm. of One Nature LLC to perform the landscaping project for 1381 Route 9G, the corner of Green Tree Drive South that Emily took care of this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you, yeah, Emily, do you want to review where we are with that? I think sure. we do want to make it, clarify it to some extent where yeah, the status. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I won't, I won't go back to the beginning. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry. Because we'd be here for a while. For Obviously, the, the gas station has been torn down, and we need to plant something on that. <laughs> but, um, you know, as, as we talked about in the past, we are not making that into a park for um, the main reason being that, well, first of all, there's already a park in the neighborhood, but if we were to designate that as parkland, that comes with um, certain legal uh, ramifications, meaning that it would always have to stay parkland. So we don't want to designate it a park because we want it to have a future that it could be used for other purposes. So what we're looking to do is really stabilize the site and reestablish um, a, a wooded um, site. And so, um, 
we put out an RFP and got a proposal from One Nature, who um, he's a restoration ecologist, and this is really what he does is he um, works on reclaiming sites and turning them back into a natural landscape. Um, I think the term he used was rapid rewilding. <laughs> so he's going to um, level and prepare the soil and get some things growing on there. And um, it'll, it'll, it's not going to be a park. It's not going to be manicured. It's going to be a natural landscape that grows up over the years. Um, and I, that's, that's the plan. And we have had a great discussion with the Hyde Park Visual Environment Committee that they're interested in um, possibly adding some um, something to it, perhaps some um, more mm -hmm. uh, larger ornamental trees that would um, give it some um, oh. yes, yeah. while, it, while it's growing in. Yeah, so uh, that's the plan. That's the plan. Great. And uh, you know, as Emily said, there um, we've dedicated a, a, quite a lot of resources to this to this corner because it required it. And there are many areas through town where we dedicate resources but the challenge is to spread them as far as we can. So we are somewhat limited in terms of what we can do in every location. And so um, our goal really was to provide a, an attractive, low maintenance natural landscape. And I think that we've come up with a good plan. The gentleman has a lot of credentials. And um, you know, it's been, it's been a long process with a lot of time and money put into it, and I'm sure it's going to be uh, attractive and beautiful. So uh, we hope that uh, once we pass this resolution that um, the gentleman, the uh, contractor, can get moving on certain portions of the project. Yeah, he may not do some of the planting till the fall, depending on well, how hot it is by the time. He it's a little late to start yeah. planting trees at this point, so um, we we most likely he will just do the uh, preparation and the planting of clover. The, the, the Did I read something about a fence? Uh, well, yeah. you know, we like Emily said, we did meet with the yeah. Park Visual Environment yeah. and. They apparently have um, had discussions where they're planning to dedicate some monies to this project. And right. so I think the concept is that uh, they will have a conversation with the contractor and come up with some uh, a plan for the additional trees. And I, I personally think a very small section of a split rail fence would look really nice yeah, in that location. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. match the other side. So, uh, we'll, but we're going to let that's see really see rather that separate happens. from us, mm -hmm. and we're going to let them have that conversation. Yeah, our responsibility after we took over the site and knocked down the building was to stabilize it, and um, that's that's as far as we're going to be able to take it. And if someone wants to add to it, well, being on the visual yeah. environment, yeah, sure. I know that they're they're very excited about this, about helping Wonderful. out with it and getting it Great. done. So. Great. I, that's probably where I heard about the fence. Probably it is. <laughs> I'm excited that that job that you actually completed that. Uh, it was a lot of well, we forward. didn't yet, you so know. Was, but to be where we're at today, yeah. um, and to have that building down and and get the rest of the contaminated soil out yeah. of there, away from that stream, and and for the residents that pull in and out of there every day, congratulations. Yeah, I mean, that was, that's an amazing. Well, to all of us, we yeah, we persevered absolutely. on that so one. I'm, I'm excited with this as yeah, well. So good. Yeah, I appreciate this whole board being supportive of that. Uh, I needed it. Okay, did we vote on that one? No. Just, just, oh, okay. we, just for the record. So this is subject to, we, we do have to tweak that agreement with them. And oh, okay, yeah, you're, you're about to do so, that. But you're authorizing the supervisor to sign the agreement as soon as I'm comfortable with it. So Okay, good. So this has been seconded already, right? No, we need, we need a second. second. We need a second. And, uh, second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I forgot where we were. Resolution 5155 of 2017, resolution authorizing the town supervisor to accept proposal from Morris Associates for landfill monitoring services for 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Pete. Pete. Yep. Resolution 515-6 <coughs> of 2017, resolution approving New York State Department of Environmental Conservation 2016-2017 MS4 permit annual report. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 I don't know. There were so many comments. I that know. It might need Rather to... controversial. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. I do. Um, resolution 515-7 of 2017, resolution authorizing the attendance of Kathleen Davis, Recreation Director, to attend the Build a Pool Conference June 16th through the 17th, 2017, in Uniondale, New York. Second. Okay, um, and I just want to bring everyone up to speed on the pool conversation. Um, if you recall, um, about a month ago, we had Kathleen here, and we had a discussion about the possible... Uh, improvements to our pool complex and at the time we discussed uh, the potential grant application through the CFA process for a uh, pool and it was the bit of the opinion of the Rec Commission that they would like to do some more work on preparing a plan uh, and subsequent to that time we have uh, done further research on our own on a different CFA application and that is the one for sewer monies that Emily discussed earlier so um, it, during that research with our grant writer uh, we brought it to his attention that we were considering the process of, of applying for both at the same time the <coughs> sewer money and a pool project and it was of his opinion that it would not be to our advantage to do that because they may weigh them and different they will look at them as a totality well you know they're looking for two million dollars for sewer and then 500 for a pool and let's just give them the 500 and skip the two two million and that just did not seem like a good position for us to be in especially with all this uh, momentum that we've gathered and all this groundwork so um i did joe and i met with kathleen and explained that to her and also because we haven't really formulated a very um, specific plan for how to address the pool improvement uh, that we decided and uh, Kathleen concurred to postpone that grant application till next year when we'll have um, a better understanding and picture of what we plan to do. So I just wanted everyone to know that's, I'm sure you were wondering whatever happened to that, so that's where we are. And looking at the details of this conference, it looks like she can get some very valuable information right. and networking. Yeah, um, and, and you know, it is, it, it will be a very expensive endeavor for the town, yeah. and it's not something that you, we should undertake uh, lightly, and so I think the conference should really be mm -hmm. uh, beneficial to Kathleen. And, you know, Emily and I have talked about it quite a bit, and, um, it seems like a lot of times uh, you projects start with a wish list instead of a budget, but in reality, that that doesn't often work out that well. Uh, it's better to, better to start with your budget and and back into it. And and so what we've had discussions with Kathleen about, you know, that you know uh, we would assume or hope that we would be able to bring in five hundred thousand in in a grant award uh, that we would use a, a percentage of the rec trust of perhaps two or three hundred thousand and then the, the town could contribute the balance but we need to keep our our goals realistic for all our projects and that's you know what we're doing and uh, I think that the town could have a fantastic pool for a million dollars and yeah. that's something that would bring us into the uh, next half of the century which mm -hmm. is a pretty frightening thought but uh, so so that's where we are on that okay Mm -hmm. We need to vote. Uh, so, do we vote? Uh, uh, so, all in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 515 8 of 2017, resolution authorizing zoning administrator to attend New York State Floodplain and Stormwater Managers Association annual meeting on June 11th, 2017 through June 14th, 2017. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 515-9 of 2017, resolution authorizing the town clerk and highway superintendent to solicit blacktop bids for the 2017 road construction you, you, season. Bid Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 515-10 of 2017, resolution authorizing the replacement of the air handler evaporator coil at the police court facility and a heat pump condenser and air handler at town hall. And a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And this kind of hits home the point that you have to be realistic. And when you're uh, building something and in your capital plans, but also projecting 
out what the cost of maintaining these projects are. And the police court is a very expensive facility to maintain, and that really wasn't part of the plan, and it should have been, and, and that will need to happen for the pool, too. Mm -hmm. Resolution 515 11 of 2017. Okay. Resolution authorizing the town clerk and town engineer to solicit bids for the repairs of the South Drive Bridge. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Pete, do you have any comment on that? or? Um, uh, just that we had met with a few contractors and um, uh, the highway superintendent, uh, and um, so I think we have a good, uh, a good plan to fix. Uh, you know the drainage because that's really what's causing the problem with um, uh, you know the wall and actually two of the contractors that we talked to um, talked us out of actually taking down uh, the parapet wall because uh, we're never going to put it back the way that it is uh, it's never gonna it's never gonna look you know the same and so I think if we improve the drainage and take care of that and do some pressure grouting of you know the wall to make sure that you know it stays in the, in the shape that it is that it is now. It's not in it's not in the condition where it's going to be falling over anytime soon. I mean, the town board went ahead and and acted on this at an early enough stage that we can improve you know the drainage and then save you know the rest of the um, um, you know the wall. So I think we have a pretty good plan moving uh, ahead. So the wall won't uh, be reconstructed. We're at not going to take it down. Okay. No. Right. No. But it, we're going to pressure grout it to make sure that the areas that have, you know, exhibited some cracking, okay. you know, are taken care of so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't get worse. Okay. And then if we improve, um, improve the drainage on each end, so the water doesn't make it to the bridge. And then we're also going to, um, two of the contractors that we talked to said that it wouldn't be that much of an issue to actually um, core drill two holes down low where the wall meets, meets, the, meets the road wow. so that any water that does kind of not quite make it all the way would be able to go through these, through these pipes and not like accumulate there and soak in and because that's what was causing the problem. So, and also we're going to do a little black topping to make sure that you know the grade is a little bit better. So, I think we have a good plan moving okay. ahead. So good. And so we're going out to bid, and so that'll happen this year. Yeah, summer. yeah. Um, you know, the goal is to uh, work with um, work with Walt, and um, you know, have the plans um, ready probably before um, Memorial Day. Um, Warren will have to take a quick look. Um, okay. at the bid documents and then we'll go out to bid shortly after that and shouldn't really take all that long the work will be able to be done over the summer before the school buses oh, roll again. Oh, that's good. I know yeah. Walt was concerned yeah. about that. Yeah. Great. Pete, yeah. with this uh, reduced uh, scope of the project, do you expect you'd have to close the bridge? Or uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think so uh -huh. because, I, you know, it's a very, it's only like 18, 18 feet wide and yeah. to get like equipment on there like in yeah. men. And it's pretty, it's it's pretty easy, you know, to redirect. Yeah, you know, it's people. not far for people. No, to there's a, a lot of alternate routes. Yeah, that you can. Yeah, so yeah. it's not going to yeah. be, it's not going to be an issue. So. Yep. I thought you're going, I thought you're going to ask me about uh, the budget. Is the budget going to be any different? <laughs> well, that's what I, I was expecting that. <laughs> so but, we'll yeah, see. Glad All to right. That. Thanks, Pete. I'm glad to hear you're keeping that wall, though. We love it. I live well, on. We were going to keep it anyways. It's yeah, just but I, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, so did we vote on that? I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. Do All right. Yes. So before I read this next resolution, um, I just really, uh, I'm in total amazement. I mean, Aileen, the amount of time that you put into this. Oh, um, thanks, Ken. You know, we kind of like just glazed over that quickly, <laughs> but the amount of hours that you really negotiated to get to where we're at with this developer is uh, truly amazing. And, you know, I really, I'm starting to see the whole pieces of the puzzle come together here and it's really it's it's an exciting time and, I, and I'm glad to be sitting up here uh, part of it but uh, you really negotiated really well with uh, this and well, thanks, uh, I'm yeah. excited to hear if the public has uh, uh, some comments of things that we might have missed but yeah. uh, I tell you I think you really have um, you know dotted all your uh, oh, well thanks so I, I just appreciate I'm, I'm really that. excited about this so uh, 
I'll go ahead and read this. Okay. <laughs> resolution 515-13 of 2017, resolution scheduling a public hearing on consideration of a potential alternate sewer mitigation for the St. Andrews Bellfield project. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that will be June 5th at 7 o'clock? Mm -hmm. 7 o'clock. 7.05, sorry, 7.05. <laughs> and then the, there's the last one. Do you have oh, a copy yeah. of it in? Uh, resolution, we already voted to add it, right? Yes. yes. Yep. Resolution 515-14 of 2017, resolution authorizing the town supervisor to submit applications for the 2017 Dutchess County Municipal Innovation Grant Program. You just whipped this up. <laughs> I did, uh, because I just whipped up the application. Uh, so. Fantastic. No, you've been working on it. I have been, but um, actually what we're going to submit is an application to do an engineering study. Uh, which we will utilize the information that comes out of the feasibility study from the NYSERDA uh, grant that will enable us to provide greater detail to the application or to the to the project description, the sewer project. The sewer project. So um, that will enable us to obtain funding. It'll make it a much more sellable project for the district residents. And so um, I've been talking with uh, Jonathan and Bridget at the Water Authority about uh, submitting a joint application to the county uh, executives program. So uh, that has to be done by Friday. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't have the actual specifics <laughs> no, here, but we're almost there. It's a so, great opportunity yeah. to collaborate with the Water yeah. Authority. And yeah, and uh, to and, yeah. get this interim, uh, because it, the project, the the concept plan that will come out of uh, the NYSERDA grant will not have the level of detail that we need to go on to the next step. So we'll hope, let's keep our fingers crossed that we get that. So did we vote on that? Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, just one um, final thing that I'd like to mention, uh, that our condolences go out to the Martino family. The prior supervisor, Supervisor Martino, passed unexpectedly this um, past weekend. So uh, we, yeah. the Friday it was, yes. Yeah. So we offer our sympathy and condolences to the Martino family. Um, so um, with that, um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Can I, can I say oh, one? Sure. one? I have a reminder. Um, working with the uh, Relay for Life uh, committee, yeah. um, just want to remind everybody that Relay for Life will be in Hyde Park this year. Uh, it's going to be at the FDR High School, and it's going to be June 3rd from uh, noontime 12 to 10 at night. Uh, so June 3rd, 12 June 3rd, Saturday, June 3rd. 12 to 10. And yeah. um, how do people find out more information about how to register? Or there, Yeah, there's a, the Relay for Life um, website is updated. And um, can we get that on something in the town? Sure, we could put that, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I have that at home. Okay. Um, and uh, Sheila Bogan is the rep that to contact, and they're still looking for teams if you want to form a team or if you want to lend a hand. They have a lot of opportunities for volunteers. So That's um, great. It's going to be a great event. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So June 3rd. June Ex 3rd, yeah. Excellent. So, of course, our Memorial Day parade is coming mm -hmm. up, and that's always a, a lovely event. And uh, I is it on the, do, does anyone know the exact date? I mean, it's the Monday, it's right? Yeah, Monday, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so Monday that's Memorial Day. Monday Memorial Day. <laughs> <laughs> Did they mention the truck event? Touch oh, the Touch-A truck? truck is this, this coming, coming, this coming Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Right down the uh, old uh, stop and shop. And uh, just as uh, a point of business, we only have one town board um, meeting scheduled. Oh, the 29th it is. Thanks, Donna. They were all making fun of me. As if, <laughs> as if Memorial Day is always the 29th. It isn't. Yeah. So. But um, we only have, uh, for June, July, and August, one meeting scheduled per month. I, we may, at the June 5th, want to schedule a second meeting for June. Uh, we may need to do that, and especially in light of this new information on the, the way this is progressing. Yeah. So, yeah. so we could do that on the June 5th mm -hmm. meeting, right? We don't have to do it tonight. Okay. Get out on the trails. They're beautiful right yeah, now. Yeah, it's really spectacular right now, isn't it? So the dogwood and it's so good. It's going to be 90, they say, towards the end of the week, right? Okay, so may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.